Welcome back to the Dirt Life Podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Eric Hiltz. There's a few things I do want to cover, uh, some important topics that I think are pretty cool going from an operator to a foreman and vice versa. I think you could share a lot of insight on kind of what that looks like and like what the process is, like what you have to do to be able to I mean, even do that in the first place? Right. Well, absolutely. I mean, it, it has been quite a process and and the road to where I am today, it was, uh, it was a struggle. Like there's a lot of ups and downs and a lot of learning. Um, the biggest thing I can really say is just never stop learning. Don't ever think you've, you've reached the top of what you're doing. So obviously I started off in a rock truck and I wasn't done there. Started in the grader, proved myself and I never stopped trying with the grader. You never, I never stopped learning. And that's, that stuff doesn't go unnoticed. Once upon a time, you were on a grader and you got a $10 raise, didn't you? That was the biggest fucking raise I ever <laughs> got in my life. <laughs> well, you deserved it, right? And I, I was in the position to do do something about it. Right. I mean, I think that's the biggest raise given ever, I think. Uh, but... I'm sure if you go through the history books of, of Keiko. Yeah, yeah it's, it's up there for it's sure. Definitely. Let's talk a little bit about going from rock truck to grader. Like... How did that come about? Well, it's a funny story. When I applied originally, I actually applied for a grader position. And um, I was asked if I would run a rock track until a seat came available, and I agreed. And I ended up on a site, and of course, the foreman didn't know me. They just didn't know anything about me. So it took a while <clears throat> to actually to get in that seat. It was actually on your site. My truck was down. Grader guy hadn't shown up. It's like, hey, why don't you just give me a shot? Let me run it for the day. At the end of the day, see what I could do, and well, kind of went from there. Pretty soon you replaced the guy on the grader? Yeah, replaced the guy on the grader, and even the guy that was supposed to have that seat wasn't even upset because he seen it himself. Okay, uh, yeah, you were better than him. I was better than him, so I don't like to toot my own horn. but No, I know, like, that's a good thing. Yep. But I will shall toot it for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and just kept proving myself and, you know, just every day just try to do a little more and be a little better than you were the day before. And before I knew it, I was, I was doing subgrade on the ring road and earned myself another substantial raise. I got another $7 on that one. And yeah, and it's just been steady rolling. I've not worked there for a long time. Uh, I think the last time I worked there was October 2018. Yeah, so I that's like that that's day. like five <laughs> five years ago now or something. Yeah, yeah. So I've not worked there for a long time. Been doing my own thing, obviously. Yeah. You also have came a long way since then. Um, so you jumped from operator positions yeah. into a foreman. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. How did that come about, and how has that journey been? Well, <clears throat> it came about. Um, I was on a site, and um, of course, we were looking for for suitable people to, to be in a supervisor's position. Um, of course, uh, my boss goes around from site to site, asks each individual supervisor who they think might be suitable for this position. So because I, I keep trying to keep my site clean, everything's rock free, everything's, you know, everything looks nice. The boss pull in and they see my work. So <clears throat> I was nominated by, by my supervisor at that time. And so I was approached and I was a little, a little leery about taking the position. It, it is, it is stressful, and I knew it was going to be. I said, you know what? I'll give it a shot. Why not? And yeah, probably best thing you ever did. It, it was. It really was. You know, some days are amazing. Other days are horrible. What it did for me is it was a giant leap into the unknown. Yeah. And I think it actually changed me as a person. It, um, I agree with that. It changed me as a person too, and the way I the way I look at things, and the way I I look at different people, and the new people coming into the industry. It's it's really changed my look and the and the whole thing, and and it's a different perspective. I'm not just an operator pushing dirt around. Now I'm looking into the you look at the bigger picture, the bigger picture, mm -hmm. the internals, and it, it was a real eye opener. It truly was. I love it, and like that just helps me. I mean, in my business now, I still look at the bigger picture thing because right. I was kind of trained into yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, that helped me into running my business here today. Right. It's given me a lot 
a lot to look forward to moving forward, right? So obviously, I, I don't think I'm done growing. It's it's really really open open things up, and uh, yeah, I just keep learning and pushing for that that next step. So today you had a long day. Um, I kind of laugh because <laughs> you, you you told me you remember those days. One small detail about today, and I kind of understood. So you were running fifty ones today, so yeah. sing, single engine scrapers. Yeah. Explain a bit about what happens when you're running fifty ones, like. Typically, those are the machines that you put in an operator that has no experience at all. That's right. So obviously, uh, my operators, they're, they're, they're doing well, but they started off knowing near nothing. So they don't know how to read the stakes. They don't know how to operate the machine. They don't know how to get a full load. They don't know how to spread it right. So it, it all takes time and it's, it's, it is slowly coming together. And then there's the machine issues themselves. They're oldish. They're, they're oldest and they're, they're prone to breakdowns. So I need quite a few of these things to, to keep a, a, a good spread going. As a foreman, I'm going to ask a couple hard questions here. Oh yeah. As a foreman, what's your training process like with those new operators? Like, how do you get them dumping in the right area, dumping in the right way, like approaching the push? Like, how do you do all that? So, it's it's challenging. It truly. That's why you need a system? You have it easier. So, <laughs> I actually had to. The, I had a lady. She's she's due for an upgrade to a twin engine. She's killing it on the on the single, so she's moving up. I asked her to stay behind and help me train these people. So she's in the cab. We put the harness on. Our new people strapped them to the hood. The good old days of riding the hood. At least but, you got straps. But, yeah, they have harnesses so they can't fall <laughs> off. So, and, you know, they just take turns. <clears throat> you know, this guy rides in the hood for a couple hours, kind of shows how things are going. We'll put him on a single engine on his own for a little bit while we strap somebody else on. Get, you know, it's and just work through the people like that, and then you know, have them stand in the cut, watch, watch the machines, what they're doing, what they're doing with their aprons, what they're doing with their bowls. You know, watch what the push cat's doing, and how he's trying to control them, and then we we put them down in the fill, and I stand there with them. And, you know, they. Okay, we follow our stake line. Okay, we just nice thin, and it, it's it's hard for them to get that uh, that smooth transition when they're coming into the fill, getting that nice that, that that nice flow going, and it all takes time. So for those who are watching, may not know a lot about singles. Um, can you explain a little bit what they're used for? Like, why would a company use singles? Like, what are they good for? These, they're good for moving a lot of dirt in a hurry, as far as I'm concerned. They are, they are a good machine if you utilize them in the right, in the right application. Um, obviously, rocky material is not very good. So, if you have a big, a big area, a big fill area, you can pound the dirt in there in a, in a hurry. Like, we can, I have four scrapers. We're, pushing 4,000 cubes a day, which I don't think is too bad for the people I have and mm -hmm. the experience they have. Um, so that application, I find, is <clears throat> is probably one of their, their better suited. Why use singles over twins? Well, one less engine. So there's fuel consumption. That's, that's probably one of our biggest ones. Um, you have half the engine, so that's half the breakdown, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, I mean... Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a big scraper guy. I don't. No, that's I fine. Don't know a lot I'm just about, wondering. Just I don't know a lot about them. Yeah. I'm learning as well as trying to teach them. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're used for doing like shortcuts because shortcuts. you can load a lot faster than two yeah. twins push pulling. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get out of you. Yep. You know that, but that's what I was looking for. Yep. But what's a challenge? as a foreman that you kind of face today, not where you work, but just, I think in construction and construction in general, we have, um, we face challenges maybe that we didn't 10 years ago with the labor force and yeah, the labor force, I'm going to say is probably one of my biggest challenges because 
I do have 15, 16 people on my crew. There's very few that really know what's going on. So I don't have the experienced people. All these experienced people are, well, I'm not even sure where they're at, <laughs> to be honest. They're on Jim's site. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Jim's hoarding them all. But yeah, that is a challenge, like trying to teach these people, well, first of all, how to, how to even run the piece of equipment. And then trying to get them to teach them how to, to build structure the proper ways of cutting, the proper ways of, of building a slope with these machines. So, yeah, so they're, they're, they're all green people. So right there, that's, that's my number one challenge. Do you think there's any way to train or even prepare these people even a little bit before they show up at the job site? Like, I don't know, I've put a lot of thought into this and I can't really think of any way to, to help prepare them. Other than, you know, maybe follow your YouTube channel. There's there's a lot of information on there. We we just filmed a couple things for Kidco, actually. Right. We did a rock truck walk around. Yeah. I mean, things have changed definitely since since I've been trained to do anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my training was, okay, uh, yeah, so uh, this is the shifter. Oh, we dump it over there. The steer brake. Oh, yeah, and this is how you dump it. Yeah, where do you go? <laughs> where am I dumping? Figure the fuck out. <laughs> And I got screamed at a lot. Yeah, me too. I had thrown, right. stuff thrown at me. Hat, well, I never had the hatchet, but yeah, shit thrown at me. And it's, and it's painfully frustrating. So I, I do take a different approach. I'm very, I don't, I always tell people when they're doing the right thing, which I never got. Mm -hmm. I always got told what I was doing wrong, but never told what I was doing right. Mm -hmm. So that's something I try to change up is um, always, always recognize people for what they're doing right so then they're not stressing out over am i doing this right am i doing this right so they can forget about that part and start focusing on other other parts of the learning process that's something that i myself tried to do too as a foreman like i i i wasn't really good foreman because i was busy my mind was doing this shit yeah back back in the day like yeah. i i guess i functioned or whatever but yeah um, my mind wasn't there. However, when it was there, you know, I, I was big on trying to deal with the people and like put myself in their position and understand right. where they're coming from because like, yeah. you, it's not all about production. No, they have to get good before they can start producing production. The balance between people and production is an important thing. And like, as I came up, like, yeah. yeah and, 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 and that is challenging because I deal with all different sorts of people. Like not everybody is the same, you mm -hmm. know, you know, everybody reacts different. Everybody has a different thought process. You know, I got to figure out my people, how they work, what, what makes them tick, so to speak. And then, yeah, and then focus on their, their good qualities so they can, you know, start working on the other stuff. You also run Dozer and Ho, yeah. you run a little bit of everything. Just like myself. I myself made a special point to learn a little bit of each machine just yeah. because, like, as you know, I mean, it rains, rock trucks go home first, right? Yeah. So, yeah. what do you recommend for someone new in construction? Well, I don't even know because I was always a huge fan of the grader. And in my mind, uh, it's probably one of the most complex pieces of machinery on our, on our site. There's a lot going on, you're constantly thinking. I like that challenge myself. I, like I hate turning around all the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pain. <laughs> but I'm a dozer guy. I know back you're up. a dozer guy. <laughs> back up the whole fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I've always liked the challenge, and that, and that really just, I always like that. And the grader, what I always found is you're always thinking, you're always thinking about what you're doing with your, your windrow, what you're going to do with these rocks, how are you even going to approach this so it looks nice at the end. And like, you get in that machine and you're going, you're constantly thinking. And if you're learning the machine, well, you're obviously thinking about the controls. There's a, there's a lot going on. And yeah, it just makes your day fly right by. And, and you're learning, to me, a vital piece of equipment. But they wouldn't start on a grader. Obviously, you're not going to start on a grader. Um, starting in a rock, well... The way we do it, you obviously you usually start in a Packer, Rock Truck, 51, 
something fairly simple. I think the Packers, a pretty good place to start if you want to progress into like a dozer position because you're, you're in there. You're in there, you're reading the stakes, you're watching mm -hmm. the fill come up, you're watching it come to grade, you're kind of watching how everything's going, the dozer guy, if he's good at what he's doing, you see how everything flows, and that's really a good, that's really a good starting point. What makes a good dozer operator <laughs> from a foreman's perspective? Hmm, that's a tough one. Because I'm not a very good dozer operator myself. You don't have to be. Um, I do see some bad operators. Knowing your machine, what it's capable of, how to... This is going to sound rid ridiculous to some people. Fine. There's a technique for ripping. There's actually a book on how to rip properly. Yeah, you can adjust the pitch. Right, like... and how you curl your ripper so it pulls your machine to the ground, you get your power to the ground, mm -hmm. knowing this stuff. So if I try a, a new dozer guy, I usually try to start him off ripping something, something he can't really fuck up. <laughs> right? See what he does to right. fuck it See up. See what he does first. <laughs> you know, if he's got his fucking ripper straight out and he's going, well... Okay, well, he doesn't really know how to do that. So put him in, push some piles. If he can keep it flat and it's all flat across, it doesn't have to be, you know, fancy. But if he can keep that flat, well, that's a, that's a good start. But when they're dealing with the trucks, how they position themselves, how they work their fill, how they work their trucks, if he's got to stop every truck, okay, well, he doesn't really know how to run a fill in my eyes. So last year I had a guy... He was getting pretty upset. He, he did have some dozer experience, and he wasn't too bad at it. But he called me up one day. He's like, you got to get over here and control these trucks. I'm like, well, what are you doing, man? Like, what's, what's the problem? Oh, they're just dumping everywhere. So I go over and I see what he's doing. Well, number one, he's on this. He's not paying attention to what they're doing. He's not focused. He's not angling his blade. I said, here, just, just let me show you a couple of rounds. These guys will do two rounds. I won't have to say a word to these guys. So, okay, I get in the dozer. First off, I straighten out his mess to start with. <laughs> get rid of the mess. <laughs> First truck comes in, I got my, my dozer angled right where it went on. They pull in, dump, right in front of my blade, push it. The next one comes in, dump, dump, controlling your fill. I get to the end of my line, all right? He dumps, I race over to the first of the next one. First guy dumps, because none of them, they don't know what they're doing. They're all green again last year. It's supposed to be directed right. by the dozer operator. Directed by the dozer operator. So if you can't control four trucks, you're not a... It's going to be chaos. It's going to be chaos. I mean, yeah, like it's... To, and me, to me... And that's just part of being a good dozer operator. To me, that's so simple. I mean, it's as simple as working left to right or right to it left is. to build a chain and then... And start again. Start again. It's, it's not rocket appliances, Ricky. <laughs> 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 but, you know... It's just a little bit of thought and, you know, and, and watching them, how they approach things. Like, you know, if they're going to start off a slope, if we're, you know, we're starting at the toe, we usually start at the bottom, work your way up. If they don't, if they don't know how to start their slope or, or start their steps and how, how they want to figure it out in, in each lift to get your desired slope, whether it's three to one, five mm -hmm. to one or whatever you're building. Yeah. So stuff like that. How important is attitude? Attitude is super important, at least on my side. It's probably more important than skill. It is. I can deal with a good attitude. If you have a poor attitude and poor skill, you're not making it with me. I'm a pretty nice guy and I'm very forgiving. I'm very understanding. But if you have a poor attitude, you're not going to make it. What I used to hate is the crusty old grumpy dozer operator that no yeah. one could work with. Yeah. I don't care how good you are. No one wants right. to work with you. Nobody wants to work with that. Mm. It brings morale down. You get these new drivers, the, the new operators. Now they're, they're panicking all day. They're scared of fucking up. And, and once they get that nerve built up, they're done. They're screwed for the, the entire day. So, yeah. You need, you need, you need good, good attitude. How important is proper direction? I've seen a lot of shitty foremans that just be like, oh, doing the same thing as yesterday. <laughs> and like, okay, well, some people weren't here yesterday. Well, and like the fill changed complete areas right. and maybe they forgot. Like, so 
every morning I, I, I take my crew, we go down, usually to the fill area, because that's, that's kind of where uh, the most importance is in my mind for a lot of it. We run through what we're going to do, and I'm very clear, keep your information limited. You, you start flooding these, these new operators with too much information, they're going to start forgetting the very important stuff. They start focusing on the little, the little things that, that aren't really so necessary. So I, I, I try to be very direct, very clear. If, um, if that program is only going to last two hours, then in two hours' time, we regroup. Okay, this is the new plan for now. And just constant communication. Let them kind of figure it out on their own, to a degree. In your opinion, how can we attract people into construction? A big thing that I'm doing with my company is right. trying to solve, or at least help solve issues like this. I think one of the biggest things, and I'm going to go back to the crusty old fox. Yeah. Those guys... Either get out of here. Get out of here <laughs> or fucking be a team player. Share your fucking knowledge. Yeah. And a lot of them don't. They just want to sit there, do their job, go the fuck home. A common thing, I've been online for a long time, and comments I've seen for years and years and years is like, people don't want to share their knowledge because they're scared that person's going to take their job. Don't be scared. If you're any good at your job, your job is secure. Yes. I mean... And that's that's the bottom line. Yeah. You'll always be leagues ahead of them if you're already leagues ahead of them. Exactly. So don't be don't be scared to share the information. Let the other let, let the next generation grow. I have this concept where to fill enough seats, we need to attract young people. Yeah. We need to attract people from other industries. Ones that I don't really give a shit about. You work at Tim Hortons and you make twenty bucks an hour. Right. Work construction and make forty. That's right. You'll have a better life. Afford a totally. truck. You can afford a house. Right. You're not struggling. Right. So to attract, I don't know how to get the attention of the young people. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a different world than when I was their age. It, things just aren't the same. I don't know myself what we could do to actually attract a, a good, a good young generation that is really interested in this and really grabs their attention. Um, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I like to blame people my age of why our children are this way. And you know what? I, I can't argue with that. For me, it's because my dad was too hard on me. Right. I find myself being not hard enough on my children. Yes. They're not spoiled little brats. Um, but I still have a challenge where they're from a certain age group. That's right. Where they think like they're friends, although they're raised a little bit differently. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's the parents' fault. It is, and it's it's yeah, it's it's our generation that is, has set set the pace for today's generation, and it is it is, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, <laughs> to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I give the tough love. You know, I tell them straight up, it's, it, it's this way. And if you do it this way, we'll be kind. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the way through it. And just do your best. When it has to be right, you can trust Leica technology to help you get the job done and grow your business with their cutting edge technology. Training employees is challenging and expensive, but like a simple to learn, simple to use products allow you to get your workforce up to speed much faster. Trust me when I say like a machine control will help you move more dirt more efficiently. For more information on Leica Geosystem solutions, please visit leica-geosystems.com. It's been a while since uh, we've been here, so I would like to remind you that this podcast is sponsored by Leica Geosystems. Speaking of that, yeah. let's talk about machine control. All right. Uh, brand doesn't matter. No. Although I prefer it Leica Geosystems. Yeah. Um, but you've used it on a grader. I've used it in dozer, excavator. Why do you use it? Like... As a foreman, does it make your workflow faster? It certainly does. It takes all the guesswork out. 
I mean, the old guys, they can read stakes, they can cut grade, they can do perfect. But there's a lot more, so let's say we're doing subgrade on a highway. If we had to do it all by stake, um, and then you're pulling strings and lines and you're doing all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. This eliminates all that and you're getting precision work and it does save time. Now I get a lot of people say, oh, well, these new, new fucking button pushers or whatever you want to call them, like they're not operators. They are operators. They can't maybe do as good a job as you could on a, on a staking system, but it's getting it done. It's getting it done efficiently. Well, in some cases they do it better and faster because and faster. they don't need to get it restaked three times right. before it's degraded or like right. whatever, right? So your whole fleet of rock trucks ran over all your stakes or all your scrapers, wiped them all out. You don't need it. Yeah, it's more precise. Like everywhere it's more precise. As long as they know how to use it and uh, know when it's not working properly. Yes. So I have run into situations where I was cutting subgrade and, you know, turn the machine around and all of a sudden my blades, you know, a foot in the air. I'm like, uh, okay, something's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which direction fucked up, but something's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> but yeah. And yeah, knowing, knowing when things aren't right. Have, have you ever used Leica before? I, I've used an older system in, in a GPS uh, hull. Uh, so I began on an older system yeah. and I used to hate it. I hate, I ha actually hated that system. Yes. It's probably the same one. I, it is. You had to be like a scientist to yeah. understand it. Yeah. Anyway, they got new one out. It is the most simple system on the market. Right. It's the easiest for operators to learn, understand, nice. uh, get up to speed real quick and start moving dirt efficiently. Right. Right. So, so most of my experience is, is with Tremble. Yep. Um, I found it very user friendly. It was, it was easy to learn. It was easy to follow. The menu was. You got to push buttons yeah, so push much. Buttons. Oh. <laughs> push the button 15 times, get back to the page that you need to get yeah, to. Yeah. But that's what I learned on. That's yeah. what I used. And that's They've since I, changed their uh, interface. So, but. <laughs> so the last time I've used GPS, it's all much more advanced than what it was then. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's changed a lot. Yeah. We've uh, not we've. I've been s filming some stuff with like uh, they're doing like three D scanning. Right? This shit is insane. There's you can like zoom in and see every crack. Like that's wild. That's wild. I'd love to try. And it's like three sixty. Yeah. So like in earth moving, you don't really need that unless you're like under bridges and yeah. like embutments and all that yeah. stuff. Then obviously or trenches stuff yeah. like that pretty cool man it is that, that would be cool and i would i would like to, uh, an opportunity to try a new system just to see just to see how it all all works like uh we need to get a demo out to kidco <laughs> so we can uh, <laughs> test some that's your camera there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta test out a new system yeah um, I actually might be filming something with Leica and Kidco. Really? It's in the works. Okay. Can't spill the beans yet, but well, I'm working on it. I'll be looking forward to that. Let's stay on the topic of machine control just a little bit longer. Yeah. As a foreman, what things may make you decide who you put in a GPS dozer? Like, as a foreman, back in the day, I got a dozer and it didn't come with no one to run the machine control. So, like... Right. Boss asked me, well, pick someone to throw in there. So right. what did you look for? I know what I looked for, but what do you look for? I look for, I look for the, the person that doesn't want to stop learning. The guy that hasn't, you know, got into the dozer seat and figured he's made it. I'm, I'm a dozer guy now. I made it. That's not the guy that's getting the GPS. Mm -hmm. I want the guy that is dedicated to what he's doing. He takes pride in his work, does great work without <clears throat> GPS. Somebody that can control things, look after things on his own. Those are the kind of guys I look for. I still think I haven't made it. Like even, I mean, I can run a dozer, I, but like- I don't even think I've made it as a grader operator and I'm advancing. There's, I know. There's still things I, yeah. I want to learn. Yeah. But 
that means you're the right person to work And I think that's why I was picked for the position. Mm -hmm. so. There's something in a person like that yep. that is like, that means you're the chosen one. Yeah. You know, I, it comes to attitude as well. I mm -hmm. present a good attitude. I treat everybody fair. Mm -hmm. I have good work ethic as far as I can see. You know, take pride in your work and don't ever think, don't ever think you've reached the top because you haven't. Mm -hmm. You might be the best in your division or whatever. Don't stop learning. Without naming names or companies, Get over. give me a crazy construction story. <sighs> How crazy. <laughs> I've seen some wild shit. Crazy as you got. I've seen some wild shit. I mean, I saw this one guy. Can't say for sure. Pretty sure he's looking at his phone, driving his haul truck. Pretty near drove off a fucking 15 meter embankment. <laughs> he's hanging off the side. I don't even know how it didn't go over. I have no idea. Just the grace of fucking God. I'm looking like... You got acres of land over here. Why are you <laughs> right on the edge? <laughs> Man, if he had it went down, holy shit. That, that, that one scared me. Just the thought of it. I've seen, uh, I haven't seen anything too, too crazy. There was a lineup of scrapers. One guy in the front stopped, and it's just a chain reaction of bang, 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 <laughs> bang. I'm like, holy shit, there's busted windows. It's a good thing they're meant to do that, right, but, but kind of. There's busted windows. <laughs> One person puts their head through the window, the windshield. I'm like, holy shit. Pay attention, you guys. That's kind of funny. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> What's the most amount of machines you've seen stuck at one time? Because... You eat one stuck, so you get a machine to pull it out, right. and sometimes that one uh, gets stuck. I myself have only seen like two or three, probably three max. I've heard some stories of the excavator was out trying to dig out in this wet area, fucking sunk right up to his nuts, sitting in his seat. <laughs> so they go out with another one, it's stuck, <laughs> then they get the dozer, and it's stuck, and it's just chaos and takes days to get them all out. I seen nine twin engines nine? stuck. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. Hell. I would pull my hair out if that happened on my site. Mm -hmm. I'd throw a fit. <laughs> Be no more Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> I have a crazy story that I've never talked about. Um, I was up in Fort Mac, I was a foreman, but I was the foreman on the day shift, night shift. There was a road crossing where we had two trains of scrapers going right. across the road. We had lights set up there, yep. girls flicking lights, whatever. Anyway, cab driver was bringing someone from the oil sands to the airport, yep. rushing because they're late for the plane or whatever. And Scraper crossing at like 60K, yeah. six, seventh right. gear, whatever, full, almost full out, and hit the car. The car got sucked under the push block between the tires. The guy in the back seat goes, head chopped off. Yeah. I got called in to help back the scraper off. It was. That's horrible. Fucked up shit. That's fucking horrible. It's important to slow down in construction <laughs> right? zones. Like, you never know what's going right? to pop out. You have no idea, right? You're gonna If you're going to run through a, a, a road crossing for equipment, you are taking your life in hands. It's, it's, a, it's a fucking serious thing. Who's your boss? Rob Cornwall. He'll be here on Thursday doing the podcast. Nice. Nice. That's like a... Uh, I mean, for me, it's a pretty cool sir, uh, full circle moment. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's crazy, man. It is crazy. I mean, yeah. I remember, Dude, I used to be a fucking I know. dozer. I know. I remember dumping for you. We were building pond out in Savannah for Frenchie, I think. When was that? Oh, that was, that was my first year, 2017. 
You were on GPS for, for Frenchie, I believe. Yeah. Was I? Yeah. Yeah, we were doing the pond in Savannah. I think, uh, yeah. Savannah, though. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to remember that one. Anyway, yeah. Dude, I used to be a dozer operator. It's fucking nuts. But you're a good one. Well, I don't toot my own horn. <laughs> you should. Well, no, I, I mean, I, I just tried to do the best I could, and, like, I may have right. got good because, like, thoughts turn into things, and if all you think about is how you can be the best dozer operator ever and the most efficient and just, like, right. how f the physics of everything works right. and systems of dump it, like, of course you're eventually going to be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, so. and, and that brings me back to, like, don't ever stop learning. Mm -hmm. Don't ever stop trying. You, you'll continue to grow your entire life if you just keep that mentality of what can I do better than I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, any people that you used to operate side by side with that you're now bosses of? A uh, boss of? Mm, last year I had a couple. How did that go? Um, it was different. It it. I didn't want it to change the relationship that we had because we're obviously friends. We work together side by side. And now I'm telling them what to do. And, you know, they, they played nice for the most part. They yeah. understand my position and, and their position, their job. Their job never changed. Um, but I treat them fairly. I didn't treat them any different. Did they treat you any different? Uh, no. Like I find no. there was resentment or like, why the fuck did they pick him? Well, obviously well, for reasons. There, there is, there is definitely people within the company that do that. Um, I've never experienced it myself. Yeah. I, uh, I've had my brother work for me before. Yeah. I had my son work for me, which I fired. Yeah. He fucking sucked. Yeah. So I mean, I gave him a couple chances, and like, first thing off is like, dude, I'm not your alarm clock. Get your ass out. Yeah. I'm not waking you up. I'm right. Waiting. I left his ass at home a couple times. Like, Welcome. yeah, you're not making no money today. You're fucking staying at home. You don't wake up. Figure it I out. I left without him. Figure it out. Yeah. I'm half as hard as my dad was on me. Right. Um, but yeah, he learned a very hard lesson. He was making good money running a packer. Yeah. And, but, that's, uh, but that's the tough love. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then he got fired. And <laughs> then. He may he got a huge pay cut, like almost half, went to right. making fifteen bucks an hour, yeah. busting his ass doing rebar and concrete. Right, man, that's a tough life. I did concrete for a lot of years. Uh, I did for like three. I did it for fifteen years. I used jack Damn. I used jack up houses, put basements under them. Like it's all physical labor. I my knees are suffering from that. So that's and then I I learned how to run equipment. But man, that's that's tough, and it doesn't pay as well as an operator. My opinion, well, besides the job I have now, yep. being an operator is like the best job ever. To me, this, I've done a lot of different things over the years and operating is definitely one of my favorite. It's definitely, it's right up there at the top. There's a few things I don't like about it. Obviously, weather dependent <clears throat> is tough. Yeah, that's, that's very sucky. <laughs> but, I mean, if, you can manage money decently, Yeah, you should be okay. But like yeah. when I was working with a bunch of people and we were all making lots of money and they were broke before next payday. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I was married with kids and like paying right. two cars and house oh, and like, it's, it's yeah. gotta manage your money properly, I suppose. Yeah. Make smart choices. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always wasn't like that. But I've smartened up a lot. Oh, well, we... Now even more, like, and next week, it's been three years since I had a cigarette. Really? Good for you. Used to chain smoke yeah. like a motherfucker. Yeah, actually, I remember when you were in my forum, and you smoked a lot. Yeah, nonstop. Yeah. I'm thinking two packs a day. I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Two packs a day, drinking every night. Great. Good times. Now I go to the gym every day and don't smoke Great. and barely drink. I mean, I still like drinking, but... Well, I know you like to have beer, because I see that every once in a while. Oh, I'm in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, uh, I, I did begin showing a lot of where I'm going. Yeah. 
because I had some jealous motherfuckers made some comments. I was like, you know what? You know I'll what? fucking show you everything that I'm Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. So that that's why I post like that on Facebook to good for you. Show some motherfuckers, but well, um, you got it once in a while. Yeah, but I, I'm really not trying to like be better than anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, I'm just living my best life and right. chasing okay. my dream and shit like that, right? That's so right. chase the dream. Just so happens that I turned it into a job that I get to travel lots. Yeah. However, it's not all fucking sunshine and rainbows. No, of course. Last not. year I was on fifty-one flights. Last year, fifty-one flights. Fifty-one. So that's almost one per week. Yeah. Some weeks I was on three or four yeah. or five. Yeah. Um, but dude, it turns into a job. Yeah. Sleeping in airports because you're missing flights. My my last flight I came from when was that? A month, a few weeks ago. I came from Cali. Stranded. Yeah. Had to fucking. Right. Stay now extra time, like it's a pain in the ass. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. You're gonna have. Fun. And I'm bringing cameras and drones. I get searched. Every time I go through. I bet you do. It is fucked. Yep. Show up way early. I'm going to search my shit. So what's, what's the plan for tomorrow? Is it raining? What, what's, what's going on? So like as a foreman, you kind of need to forecast. You need to look at the weather all the time because you have to plan yeah. out your own job site. I really do. Your I... boss really doesn't do a lot. Like you're left to... I am... Do a lot. I am expected to be very self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. So I do do a lot of um, pre-planning. Obviously, every plan I make usually changes. Mm. Almost every one of them. So I, I try to come up with uh, two or three different plans. There's always a plan B, plan C. Um, so tomorrow, I, I don't think we're getting rained out, so it's we'll be in full swing as long as everything works. Mm -hmm. 51, obviously. Um, yeah, so I mean right now, so I have two spreads. I have a, a rock truck and a scraper spread. The scrapers are hauling very dry material. I'm digging in a burrow pit, which is in a wetland. So that's very wet material. So tomorrow I'm going to have to switch their fills, get a little bit of dry stuff on the wet, put a little wet stuff somewhere else, shuffle some things around. Hopefully everything works out. Something I've never talked about yet on this podcast is uh, dirt testers. Dirt testers. Do you have some insight on what it's like to work with a brand new engineer, dirt engineer slash dirt tester that just came out of school? No experience in the field yet. So actually last year I had two or three different um, dirt engineers fresh out of school. Dirt sniffer. Dirt sniffers. <laughs> <laughs> There's only once where I actually had to call their boss and just, you better come down here, just make sure he's using the right proctor. That, because in my mind, I see what my dirt is like. And I'm picking up a handful and I'm squeezing it. Good compaction. It's not that wet. I'm like, what's the fucking problem here, boys? <laughs> or oh, it's too wet. No, no, it's not. It is challenging because they are by, by the book, and, and I get it. They're, they're trying to prove themselves in their industry to their boss, and they're trying to do the right thing. It is a lot of responsibility on them because at the end of the day, what, whatever they've allowed, you know, that goes against their company. So if it does fail in the future and it comes back on those, so he, he wants to make sure all his, all his I's are dotted and his T's are crossed, and I, and I get it. But it is challenging because... They don't have that that real life experience in the dirt. Those new guys. I've I've had, I've had older guys that they don't even get out of their truck. And they don't even test. They just look. Oh, There's no deflection. You're yeah, good. Looks good. <laughs> All right. You're not gonna test it. Oh, he just scribbles in some numbers. Okay. Very good then. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Making money today. Fucking right. Keep going. <laughs> but yeah, now the new testers. It's 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 a bit of a you got to work with them a bit. I I worked at this one job site, and there was a dirt tester like that, and he left for a little bit. Right. The foreman was throwing in meter lifts. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't. Like in trenches, right? Oh well. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> I don't like doing that. I like I like to play by the books as close as I can. So. 
thirty cent lift to me is 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 normal. Yeah. That's a that's a normal lift. It depends what's driving over it. Yeah, it depends what's driving over it. Like if it's a plate tamper, probably too thick. Yeah, if it's a fucking eight fifteen, right. you're good. Yeah, an eight fifteen or an eight and a quarter. Yeah. Plus you're putting it in with twin engine fifty sevens. Like, yeah. You're pounding that down. You you don't have to worry about that shit. But yeah, meters pushing it. Uh, eh, yeah, I don't like that shit. What I don't like is I wasn't allowed to in some on some big projects is to use scrapers as compaction equipment. So I'll explain a little bit. I was up in Fort Mac building a big um, interchange, and it was. Two in the morning, I was doing night shift. It was uh, quite cold out, frosty, so the dirt was getting cold on the way down. Right. And you had five minutes to get it packed in place before it froze. Right. Or, yeah, yeah. like the top was zero and then you can't put place yeah. on top. That's right. So it had to be packed before then. The packer broke down. I got 15, six, 57s in a lineup waiting to dump. And this guy will not pass it. Um, so I was like, okay. He's like, yeah, it needs more packing. I was like, the packer's broken. No, he's like, oh, I don't know. So I got all the scrapers to drive all over it. Yeah. All over. Yeah. I mean, I made him test it. It passed. And then I got in shit because that's not packing. Uh, packing. The oh, I don't get a fucking shit. I don't man. care. It's fucking packed, isn't it? Let's go. It was packed for like three minutes with all oh, 15 yeah. just doing this. Like, that was, it packed better. It does. Than a packer. I mean, it's an expensive packer, well, but like is, in but dire need. Like, dire need, it got you through. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to actually touch on a packer and, and the difference between like a rubber tire packer and, and a steel drum. In my opinion, rubber will knit things together so much tighter. It, I, I think you get a better product if you're if you're looking for real density. Yeah, you put something with rubber tires in there, and that's going to knit that shit together. It just doesn't go as deep, so it'd be good for it surface. Yeah. So if you're dealing with yeah smaller yeah yeah, yeah. I, I've worked with some stupid operators. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go on that one. <laughs> a few years ago, we're on uh, we're doing a night shift on a big project here in the city, and. Um, we had this one guy, he was riding a rock truck. Hull road is pretty simple. One way in, a different way out. So it was two, it was, it was a loop. This guy got lost every fucking round. He come down the hill, maybe just off out in the middle of nowhere. I get on the radio, hey, what are you doing out there, bud? Well, I can't find the hall road. I said, I don't suppose you can. <laughs> it's not out there. <laughs> So I was on the grader, it's a 24M, big grader. So, okay, well, I guess I'll have to put a windrow up here so try to keep him on the haul road. He drives over it. Next round, he drives over it. He's off in the middle of fucking nowhere again. Okay, bigger windrow. I fucking, I get the fucking <laughs> big, massive window. No way he's fucking going over that. No, he goes around it. You Fucking idiot. Man, this guy, now he's making me mad. <laughs> so there's six or seven rock trucks. I stop every one of them. Dump, dump, dump. I had a fucking mountain. There's no way. You can't go around this. Yep. <laughs> what? I stopped this guy. I said, what in the fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I just... I'm trying to get over here. Well, I see that, but this isn't where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be over there. Follow the fucking, oh man. That Follow was the pack. Painful. That guy just did not get it at all. Cruel. We tried him on a dozer one time. So he, he so this was before, before this incident. Yeah, I know how to run a dozer. So, um, yeah, one of the other four. I mean, okay, well, yeah, what we need you, we need you to cut down the slope. It's, uh, the thing was a one to one and need to be a three to one. Yep, so we just got to cut this down. So he jumps on the D10, blade up all the way, right off the fucking one to one. <laughs> just, you didn't even try. <laughs> <laughs> like, why didn't you put your blade down? Or why didn't you stop? Why didn't you do? Well, I didn't really know any. <laughs> okay, well, back to the packer. <laughs> Holy hell. 
you do, you really don't know what you're going to get into sometimes. Yeah, it's uh, it's mind blowing, but like to me, I just found all this stuff simple it came natural to yeah. me. Like, I mean, it's it's pretty basic stuff in the, in the grand scheme of things. I mean, you take your cut, you cut it to grade, and you take it to the fill, and you put it to grade. Mind it, it's not that simple always. There's always some challenges, there's hurdles, mm -hmm. and there's things you got to do to to achieve that. But in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's not rocket science. I could not sit in a rock truck and not pay attention to what's going around on the job site. Right. I couldn't you, sit in the packer and not else, pay attention. You have nothing else to do. I mean, you're just going back and forth. Have a look around, see what's going on around you. Instead of being just, oh, well, I'm doing my job. Oh. Yeah. That drives me mental. No, I know. That one drives me mental. So those are the people that, that I don't generally upgrade. If they're just going through the motions. Don't allow them to have your cell phone. I mean, yeah. there's only so much you can do. I mean. I know, but okay, so I like if, if you get caught on it, you get sent home. Yeah, and that's, and that's what it's gonna come down to. The crew I have now, they're all really good. Everybody's focused, they're, they're all focused on what they're doing. I do have a good crew this year. Last year, I was, I was really struggling with the operators and the phones. And it's, it really causes some fucking dangerous situations. Yeah, and I don't like it. Let's just hope they're all watching my shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you hear this, they will be. They'll be like, oh, I got there's my boss, look. <laughs> well, watch where you're fucking going with that truck. Don't show them. <laughs> is, is there any people you want to call out? <laughs> <laughs> Not today. No, I know. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> so you still do the, the merch? You just, no, you don't do I haven't done that in years. No, I didn't think so. Um, like I have some that I wear. Yeah. There's some some for the guys. For sure. uh, we're now just doing ones just like just for us basically yeah. when we're on shoots, so like yeah. people know who we are. But um, guys laughed that I was wearing my merch essentially when I met the premiere. Right. Um, we filmed that whole event and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I love that one. They're like, "What? You're not wearing a fucking dress shirt? You're wearing jeans, Jordans, and..." What are you like, dude? That's who I am. This man. is my style. That's who I am. I'm like, I go to big business suppers wearing jeans and a hoodie. Yeah. And a yeah. Fucking hat. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> really? Fuck this it. is my style. But yeah, man, it's it's been uh dude, it's been a long hard road, but yeah, no, I mean it, it's about to get a lot better shortly. Yeah. It's just amazing what happens when you don't give up, right? Yeah. Um not to keep going on about myself or whatever, but no. um, I think winter of 27, 2017, yeah. uh, I was a foreman, but um, it was winter, so Dave Dave was the foreman of the job site, so all the other foremans ran machines for him. Yep. I was on a fucking rock truck. Yeah. And I don't like rock trucks. Right. I especially don't like cat rock trucks. No. Every day. I went to work saying, I need to do something. Like, I need to bring my shit to life because yeah. I cannot be driving rock trucks. Right. I have to get out of this. And that's how I was. When I first started, I did like three months in a rock truck and I just, I got to get the fuck out of there. I don't mind being a foreman. I love running dozer. I cannot do rock truck. I, I can't do it. It's just mind numbing. I went to the, to the gravel pits this year. How was that? It sucked. I didn't like it. <laughs> it fucking Plain sucked. out, it sucked. It fucking sucked. Um, yeah, two days of that, I'm like, why in the fuck did I agree to do this? Fuck, I hated it. The ground's frozen, and you just beat your fucking guts out all motherfucking day. <laughs> Dumping shit slop over the edge, like, fuck. <laughs> Splashed all over your mirrors, you gotta fucking stop every hour and clean your mirrors so you didn't see shit. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> I love, this is good for the episode. Like, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's relatable by a lot of operators. Right. Because like we've all dealt with that. Some people love it though. I got guys that have been running rigid since, well, when I started, we, we ran together and they have no more interest in doing anything else but that. Like my brother. 
Right? He's, Some guys just love that shit. Well, we need people like that in the world. We do. We certainly we do. do. Like, we do. There's nothing wrong with it. It's no. just, it ain't for me. No, it's not for me. As yeah. much as I promote growth and learning, we do need those people that are happy to be sitting on a packer for the mm -hmm. rest of the life or in a rock truck. Yeah, we do need those people. I worked with a guy, or he worked for me. He was, uh, you know, Alan... Runs Ho, Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. dad worked for me, 69 years old, running a twin. Really? How old? 69. Running a twin? He ran one for 40 years. Oh, Bill, he still runs twins. He still? Yes. How old is he now? Fuck, I don't even know. He was 69, and that was 2013. Right? Yeah, Bill's in his... That was... Bill's over 60. Nine right? years ago. Yeah, he's in his 70s now. Yeah. Still running twin. Yep. Holy fuck. I know. His back it's must be like back. that. <laughs> like, though, the scraper, it's a young man's game. Mm -hmm. It truly is. But, like, that's all he's ever done. And he's really no desire to do anything else. He might want to run a rock truck. I'm like, really? All right. <clears throat> Whatever. Teach their own, I guess. Crazy. But no, I just, I couldn't handle it. It's, there's only so much you can do. And it, like, I mean, yeah, you can do better at certain things, but you just can't really expand on a rock truck. Like, unless, I heard one guy call himself a Finnish rock truck operator. <laughs> I won't mention any names, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fuck that. On one of your job sites, what's the most dirt you've ever moved? Ah, uh, I've reached 9,000 cubes one day. When, when you worked with me on the ring, on the ring road site 10. Yep. Remember we had like 40 11s. Yeah. That was a twins, there was, singles, rock trucks. There was wiggles, there was rigids, there was twins. I think site 11 or nine, I can't remember which way the numbers went. Mm -hmm. They had. They had 51s or 31s. There, there's a point where I had all of it, like the site 11 didn't start yet and site nine didn't start yet. 10 was the first one, yeah, I, yeah. The first one going. And then I brought in all these. We had 43 in the lineup. Yeah. We moved, our best day was 28,000. Holy shit. In one day. That's amazing. You know how fucking stressful that shit is? Yeah, well... <laughs> you were on the grader on the 24 doing the whole roads. I know. Yeah. It was, it was a wild time. I was chain smoking that day. I bet you were. <laughs> and I look back at those days. Now that I'm in my position, I'm like, wow, them poor bastards. I love the action, though. The action, and I like... It, I, I, I enjoy the challenge. Mm -hmm. And when things start piling on, yeah, I do get stressed out. But at the end of the day, and everything's dealt with... I, I feel rewarded. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I really accomplished and I put in my good day and shit went. We got her done. Got her done. Got her done. What's the coolest job you ever did? Like, what's the coolest job site? You got one? Or most interesting, cool, I don't know. I don't the most know. fun? I really enjoyed the Ring Road project. I know it was a lot of, it was a pain in the ass for the supervisors and foremen. Yeah, I got kicked off it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was there that day. <laughs> Fucking guy in the dozer run over a gas line. Yep. I wasn't supposed to. Yep, after we told him there's a gas line, just pad over it. But right you, you were there with me? I didn't remember. I, I was there. I actually went and got the cable with the 24. I hooked him up to a 57. I'm admitting all this now. I lied before and through my teeth <laughs> about what actually happened. But yeah, no, I hooked them up. We drug them out, and yeah. You you lied about what happened? I Why? lied about my my participation. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I really I don't remember a whole lot about it, but yeah. Remember, I got let go. They were gonna fire me. Yeah. Robbie. Really. Said Scott goes, I go. Nice. No, that's a boss that has your back. Ro I, I appreciate Robbie. He does have mm -hmm. your back. And 
I try to have his back as well. I try not to put him in a position where he's going to have to um, face consequences or get shit on. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And I think that's uh, I think that's a good um, boss employee relationship. Mm-hmm. We have, everybody has to look out for one another. I mean, my boss obviously has to look out for me and my, and what I'm doing, but I have to carry that through with my crew, and I have to look out for them, and I ex- I do expect a little bit in return. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know? Yeah, I always try to yeah. help out people as much as I can. Like, even now, I have employees. Like, yeah. there's a guy here, he, he doesn't have his license. He's like, dude, I will, I will help you get it. Yeah. If I have to pay for your license, I will teach you how to drive. Whatever it takes, man. Whatever it takes. As long like, as they're willing to put in the effort. You're part of the team. Yeah. You're part of the team. We do, we help the team. Teamwork to make the dream work, boys. Exactly, so. But, yeah, you know, I, I try to help all my employees as best as I can to my abilities without overstepping boundaries, obviously. I try not to get too involved in their personal life. Yeah. Even though... There's a part of my job that I do require to know a certain amount of their personal life, so I know what they're bringing in every day if they're stressed or, or, or you know, maybe they're having home problems or whatever. <clears throat> I have to understand that that's what they're going through to help get them through the day, basically, just to change their mindset for the day and, and work with them that way. Mm-hmm. What's the thing you hate most about construction? All the things that I love, I fucking hate. <laughs> you hate that you love them. I hate that I love it. You know, I do like the challenges, but the challenges really fucking piss me off. <laughs> but at the end of the day, and I overcome them all, I, uh, that's my reward. That's, that's mm-hmm. what makes me feel good about what I do. Do you have kids? I have two. How, how old are they? Um, I have a daughter. She's 18, and my son is 15. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, I have one that's 14, 17. Yeah. So close. Yeah. What has it been like for them, uh, you working in construction? You're you're from the East Coast, right? Yeah, I am. From you're new for right. There's a hint of it in your voice still. It's Nova Scotia. I'm not new. Ah, oh, same shit. Yeah. My mom's from Nova Scotia. Jesus, Whatever. Fucking Flatlander. What are you talking about? <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Going for a rip, are you, bud? <laughs> um, they do find it challenging because they still live in Nova Scotia with their mother. Well, they do? Yeah. So it has been challenging that way. My first few years out here was probably the hardest years of my life. It was quite a change. I was struggling really hard at home. I was going in the hole. There's no work back home, eh? At that time, there was very little work. And I was a foreman for a concrete company, making $15 an hour. And that, that was tough. Mm-hmm. I would, literally, every, every pay, I was, I was going in the hole. So I, I had to make a desperate decision. Mm-hmm. And so I, I made the jump. I came to Alberta, forced my way through the system. And made 17 bucks an hour. Yeah. <laughs> made, yeah. 18 bucks an hour on a fucking rock truck. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> fuck. At least it wasn't hard labor. It wasn't hard labor. And actually, so one of my first jobs was with Marmot Construction, and it's all union. They paid me $23 an hour to start with a shovel. Man, I worked my ass off because that's what I was used to. I worked my ass off 12, 14, 16 hours but a day. But it's union, so the hard work doesn't get you anywhere. It didn't get me. I actually got shit. Working too hard. You're making us look bad. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what he told me. He said, you've got to slow the fuck down. <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I know. What? It was wild. That was, that was, that was I didn't know what to think of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. I guess I'm gonna go fucking hide for a while then. <laughs> no, but I'm just I'm not built like that. No, and I and I wasn't. So I didn't really last that long. I did put in a couple of years with them. I got on um, a backhoe with another company that contracted through them. So I was still working with the same people, but I was doing my own thing, and it's a little higher pace. So now I'm working with machinery. Now it's my responsibility to stay ahead of the excavator, do the breakout, whatever I need to do. And so it was a, it was a much better fit for me. It kept me a lot busier. And I wasn't getting yelled, I was getting yelled at for not maybe doing enough. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's where I strived, really. Yeah. I thrive being 
thrown to the sharks. Yep. And that, we, I think we all do. And actually, to, to me, like, so last year was my first year as a, as a supervisor. My first job was just uh, fairly small, wasn't too bad, but then right to a big job. <laughs> Bang, here's fucking 20 pieces. Handle it. I'm like, Phew. but I handled it. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. Man, it was a lot. Holy shit. I, that's how you grow, though. I, and that's how, but I, all right, this is what it is, I guess. Fucking handle it. Trauma makes amazing people. It does. It truly does. <laughs> and uh, this year, I noticed a big change in myself. I'm a lot calmer. Mm -hmm. I'm not so stressed out because, you know, I was, I, was, I was learning the safety aspects, all the sight docs, my, my iPad, learning what my actual job was. You got iPads now? Yeah, we got iPads what? now. Fuck yeah. Technology's oh, cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah, I do notice a big difference in myself this year. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Oh, shit. So yeah, trying to learn all this shit, plus train people to do their job, and making phone calls, calling. It, it's, wow, it was a lot. I won't lie. But we got through it, and it's just made me better prepared for this year. Do you take time off? You go on vacation? You Actually, take winter I'm taking, off? What's I'm going taking on? some time off this month. The end of the month, I'm taking a week. My daughter's graduating high school. So I'll go home for graduation. Nice. Yeah. They're going to come back to Alberta with me for a little bit. Check out the Alberta life. Yeah. Yeah. Give them a little different experience. They've never been out here before? That They've never left Nova Scotia. Time to get the hell out of there. Fuck yeah. I love the place, but I'm not going back. Yeah. yeah. It's like me in Saskatchewan. Yeah. I could see it being fairly relatable. Yeah. I mean, both places are secluded and suck. Yep. Secluded, suck, <laughs> and... Yeah. No work. No work. Well, there's work in Saskatchewan. And, but and there's more work in Nova Scotia now than there was yeah. when I left. So they opened up a gold mine. Um, there's a lot of work in Halifax around the shipyards. There is some development going on. You remember long hair Chris, Chris Smith? The surveyor? Surveyor. Yep. So he's he's going back to Nova Scotia uh, right away. And so there's, there's lots of work for, there is subdivision work, so he, he landed himself a good job surveying. So he's down in the city, hmm. or he's going to be. I didn't know he was from there. Yeah, so he's actually from the same area I'm from. Really? Him and my brother went to high Where school. Whereabouts? So I'm from River John, Pictou County, and he's from... Eureka, Hopewell, Pictou County. My mom's from Sydney. Yeah. Or Cape Breton. Yeah. Cape Breton. New if you want to <laughs> Probably. Cape Bretoners are they're a funny bunch. So, I mean they're all funny bunch. Oh well there. we all are, but uh the Cape Breton is obviously part of Nova Scotia, but they don't call it Nova Scotia. They're Cape Breton. They're not Nova Scotians. Whatever. Yeah, that's why I said whatever. Man. You have no interest going mining at all, or? I mean, I always have interest in doing that, uh, different things. Um, like oil sands, you know. Uh, I've never know. been. The the oil sands never really appealed to me. Me too. Um, the camp life, I'm not. I'm, I don't think I'd, I'd be that into that. Been there, done that. Yeah. Hate that. No, sure, the money's good. You know, you could do two weeks on, one week off, whatever. You get a little fucking work life balance, but. Those two weeks living in a fucking camp, like, fuck that. No. <laughs> that takes a certain person, and I'm not that person. Yeah, I've tried that. I'm, I mean, yeah, I don't like camp life. I got so fat because they feed you so good. Right. I would like to see it, though, firsthand. And, you know, have the experience. I would like to have the experience just to see what it's like, what it's all about, mm -hmm. see how they do things, see how they run their operations. But... To stay up there in a camp, I'm not really that interested. Like, to me, mining is similar to driving a rock truck. Yeah. Mining, you know, they don't really have grades like we do. Right. There's, there's, I'm sure it has its challenges, but doing what I do. It's a bunch of boring shit, if you ask me. It is. It's fucking boring shit. It really is. Um. I like I like what I do. There is challenges. There's there's grades to follow, and there's you know there's funny contours you got to figure out. And 
I don't always have GPS, so I got to figure it out with stakes and, you know, doing the math and figuring out these fucking offsets and the slopes. Mm -hmm. And I do like that. It really makes my makes my brain work. Finding unexpected things like yeah. topsoil, snake pits, yep. fucking shit from the 60s, railroad right. ties. Like, you never know what you're going to find. So, yeah, last year, well, my, it was my first site. It was on 144th. I think you made a visit one day. Um, the, the tester, which was a new tester, said, well, mm -hmm. we have to dig a test hole in the middle of the road. Well, why? We're, we're just filling it in like it's a fucking road. It's because they built roads with topsoil back in the yeah. day. And there was a meter of fucking topsoil underneath it. I'm like, this is fucked. <laughs> this is fucked. Yeah. It's interesting what you find. And then I actually had a good scare. So generally, if you see a yellow pipe, that was a gas line. Mm -hmm. I found one. And it was an old, old yellow jacket water line. And I panicked. I shut the whole fucking site down. This fucker was... Like, holy shit, that's not even on the fucking locates. I'm calling fucking safety. I'm calling the fucking locators. Like, the fuck is this? And they come out, and they're like, a lot of a lot of them had no idea what the fuck it was either. They're like, that's not supposed to be there. I had one old guy come along. Oh, that's an old yellow jack. They used to use those back in the fucking 60s. I'm like, what? Yeah. So they done a little back tracing and some paperwork and looked through the fucking archives of fuck knows where. I think it was uh, Rocky Mountain um, Municipality or whatever, yeah. Rocky View County. Yeah. And then they found that's what it was. That that scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it doesn't take a very big gas line to make a big no. boom. And this was big enough to make a fucking very large one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that one scared me. I love the construction stories. Right. I got lots, but I can't tell I, them, I can't tell them all on on one podcast. Right. What the fuck am I going to talk about on another podcast? <laughs> well, that's just it. Yeah, there's all there's tons of stuff to talk about. I, I like I forget half the shit. There's just so much. Some days it's wild. What's your thoughts on safety these days? Safety has really been driven into my head. So safety is number one for me. Like I will take the time to take the take the people out of their equipment, walk through what we're doing, explain what we're doing and why we're doing it, the way we're doing it. Um, they need to know where those utilities are. They need to know whether or not we can cross them and, and why we can't or or why we have to cross where we are. A lot of people just don't understand the seriousness of, of what can happen if, if something like a gas line gets damaged or even a fiber optic line, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it may not cause any physical injury, but the, the cost of that is, can be quite, <laughs> quite expensive. I have a short story. Sure. I was working on mm -hmm. the Southeast ring road. So the other quarter of it, we were working, a guy hit uh, a fiber junction. Yeah. It cut out TV from here to Fernie. Fernie. During Super Bowl. Oh, you weren't a very popular person that day. It wasn't me. <laughs> oh. I was just there. Oh, yeah, yeah. They got charged, what was it, like 100 grand an hour or something yeah. like that. It was down for, like, I think the next day. Like 12 hours or something like that. Wow. Fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> A big bundle. Like that, that would, that would sink a company. Mm -hmm. They were, well, it, they were big joint venture, like right, on the last right. one. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't Qwit or yeah, whatever, but. I remember, yeah, yeah. 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 Hopefully they had insurance. <laughs> I mean, that 12 hours works out to 1.2 million. 1.2 million dollars. That's a big I mean, chunk of change. Yeah, still, that's not that bad though, but. In the long today's, in the grand. Scheme, when the job was worth. $2 billion dollars yeah. or whatever. Things, but it's still a big hit. Yeah. Right. But yeah, continuing on with safety, uh, I do I do take it quite serious. I, uh, toolboxes, hazard assessments, I try to cover as much as I can without overloading the operators with too much. So I tried to do um, multiple 
multiple toolboxes at least throughout the week um, multiple hazard assessments just so I'm, I don't give them too much in one day give them a few basic things okay this this is our basic shit and then a couple of days we'll go through some more stuff or get a little more in depth and a little little wider range of of what what the hazards are and, and make sure everybody understands there's a few things I don't like about safety like it depends on the company so the bigger corporation type yeah. companies I find that they're so so safe it's unsafe yes I I, I agree with that um, and I'm gonna pick on the ring road for instance, there's a bit, it's just too much. Like, come on. Like hard hats inside your fucking machine with rollover protection cages, come on. Let's, let's, let's forget about this stupid shit and like, yeah, they can really overdo it. And um, our, our safety program is, is really beefing up. They're really trying to tighten things up and, and make us, make it a better place. Mm -hmm. There is a need for it, but yeah. There's a balance there, there that has to be achieved. So we just have to be careful and, and find that point and not overdo it to the point where we're not getting anything fucking done, mm -hmm. right? I've been trying to get Riley on the podcast. Yeah. Um, he was the first foreman that gave me a chance at who I kept my dozer clean. I was on an old D6H yeah. piece of shit. Yep. We'll probably still have it. <laughs> no, this was a different company. This oh, is 2006. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got a brand new Komatsu dozer. And he was trying to find someone to pick to right. get the new dozer. Picked me. Sweet. Um, so I'm going to tell that story with him one day. But yeah. like, dude, I don't want to come to the podcast. I'm nervous. It's like, oh, don't worry about it. So oh, you do me a favor. Next time you see Riley. I'll be, I'll be, he'll be at my site tomorrow. Perfect. I'll get He's that, coming I'll get on. Straight, babe. Like, I, I want to talk about the balance between safety and like probably he brings something good to the safety program he because does. he worked real life experience in the field exactly. as a foreman yep. and can bring that balance. He can. And he's very knowledgeable and he's, he's helped me out quite a bit with safety and with my own job, mm -hmm. obviously. He knows that balance. He's, he is trying to, obviously, we're, we're trying to get our, our safety records at, at a comparable rate to some of the other bigger companies. And I think our program is working. And Riley, Riley has a good way of uh, distributing the, the information to the people. And that's what I like about Riley. He's, he's, he's good at his job, and I think he's a, uh, a good candidate for his position. It's guys like Riley that really, you know, boost morale, but still drives the safety. So it's 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 back to that tough love again, where okay, he's firm on what he's saying, but we can laugh about it. We can, mm -hmm. we can, we can. It doesn't have to be all serious and fucking do this, do that. Where's your fucking safety glasses? It's like you know. It's no wonder some, some guys, I mean, they see the guy coming in terms of safety and they're like, oh, here comes right. this fucking asshole. And like, and I did a safety gig for a little while. I, I tried it downtown. We were building two towers. Yeah. And, and my buddy, he was uh, the super on the job. He was in charge of the whole thing. And he's like, hey, you want, you, you want to come down here and fucking be a safety officer? I said, like, yeah, fucking why not? How'd that go? That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dumbest fucking thing I ever did. I'll never do that again. But it was an experience nonetheless. And uh, yeah. Right on. Well, I mean, I think this is a pretty good podcast. There's a lot in here for a lot of operators to relate to and other people to digest. Um, yeah. A lot of honest, a lot of fucks back and forth yeah. because this is like how it really is this is construction boys and girls so fuck this fuck that what the fuck is this shit <laughs> <laughs> um, i know so like it takes a special breed to uh fit in in construction it does. Right? so but, and, but it, it is changing we're, we're i'm getting a new generation of people and they're not that hardcore fuck this fuck that mm -hmm. so i i do change my approach on how how i deal with the people and 
I encourage other people to do the same. Welcome these people in and try to find a method that works. We all need to chip in and, and do our part. Do our part for the industry or, or we'll have no industry. Yep, or this industry isn't going to last. Anyway, on that note, thanks for coming by.